Aum. Atmano vikriya nasti budher bodho na jatviti jiva sarva malang yatva gnata drashteti muhyati Atmano for the self vikriya change degradation na not asti is buddhe for the intellect bodaha capacity to experience na not jatu at all iti thus jivaha the individual sarvam all along enough gyatva knowing gyata the knower drashta the seer iti thus muhyati deludes there is no change or degradation for the self and the intellect by itself has no capacity to experience consciousness but the individual false ego deludes himself thinking he is the seer and the knower namaste so this verse can be understood as a continuation of the previous verse which we did in yesterday's video how the self is not conscious but the self is consciousness awareness only without an object and it becomes conscious or appears to be conscious through superimposition now where and how does the superimposition take place it occurs in the intelligence of the conditioned being the jiva one who thinks i am born and i exist in this world in a body and in a mind and then i have to die and go take another birth so it's described just like a plant worm if you ever go in the garden or in the forest you see these little worms and they crawl on one plant or one leaf and then they reach the end of that leaf and they transfer to another one how do they do it they keep their back legs firmly grasping the relief that they're on and then they move their front legs to the new leaf and grasp that one and when their grip is firm then only do they release their back legs and transfer over so in the same way the individual soul when it comes to the end of one body when that body becomes useless it transfers to another body by thinking about it dreaming about it reviewing the previous life and seeing uh, how it fell short and then using that to speculate or create or dream up another body and then gradually transfer itself to that body through sushupti consciousness we've talked about this many times before that sushupti is actually the creative potency shivam and so when we go into sushupti at the time of death bringing with us all the undigested or uh, unfulfilled desires and ideas and impressions from the previous life this is the seed of the next life so it's not that we only enter sushupti at the time of death it happens every night during deep sleep so these same dynamics are at work in our daily lives 
This sushupti is the wellspring of creation of the material world. And it is the source of the conditioning that allows the intellect to think, I am conscious. I am this. I am that. <laughs> All these identifications with material objects, material designations, like I am the husband of so-and-so or the wife of so-and-so. I am the father of so-and-so or I am in my job. I have such and such a title, such and such a designation or religious designations. I am a sannyasi. I am a guru. I am this, I am that. Huh? These are all just temporary and actually illusory designations of the self. Why? Because the self, the Atman, is unchanging. So in this life, we may be one person's spouse, and in the next life, we may be somebody else's spouse. So why we should accept any of these designations? The self has no designation. Huh? It's only described in the Upanishads as not this, not this, neti, neti. Huh? So it's not this designation. It's not that designation. It's not the ego. It's not the intelligence. It's certainly not the enjoyer or possessor of material objects. No, the self is without transformation, vrittis. Huh? Vritti means a modification. So what then changes when things change, when we change, like from one body to another or from one designation to another? Huh? I'm hungry, and then you eat something. Oh, now I'm full. <laughs> These are all designations related to the body. But how do we identify these things with the self? Well, it's only through superimposition. Superimposition is the illusion projected by the mind and intelligence that one thing is another thing, or that these two dissimilar things combine. For example, the self and its awareness combines with the mind and intelligence and their objects. This is the default condition of material existence. How does it become so? Through superimposition. So this superimposition is a kind of delusion, you know, like the snake and the rope. Huh? We think... I am this body, I am this mind, I am thinking all these thoughts, I am aware of all these objects, huh? and they are related to me in such and such a way, huh? and I am the owner and the enjoyer of so many possessions and uh, the object of so many attributes, huh? I have... Uh, B.A., M.A., Ph.D., <laughs> piled higher and deeper. But none of this is true. The Atman, the self, is Brahman alone. Brahman is without qualities, without designations. So any of these things that seem to apply to the self only apply through superimposition of something else onto the self. And these things are not the self, and the self never changes. So actually, it's logically impossible for the self to be conscious of material objects. It's a fake. It's an illusion. It's a magic trick conjured up by the mind. That's all. 
the mind has all these names and forms of different objects. And then it places them by superimposition in relation to the self. This is called, in advertising, this is called positioning. Like, uh, you'll see, you know, a product, right? Like a Coca-Cola or something like that. And um, they put it in a scene where all these models are like partying. And that things go better with Coke. Huh? <laughs> So I don't know, is it an advertisement for Coca-Cola or cocaine? I don't know. It's hard to tell difference because this is only positioning. It's an illusion that if you take our product and you, you drink it, you purchase it, you take it home, you drink it, then, oh, you're going to enjoy you're going to, you know, be one of the beautiful people. And you're going to have all these perfect friends. And you're going to party like it's 1999. No, no, that's not going to happen. It can't happen. Because it's just an illusion. It's not real. So because it's not real, it just simply appears on a page in a magazine or in a TV ad, and it is gone within a few seconds. And it certainly doesn't apply to you. But through identification, one thinks, oh, yes, I can be like that. It's just like when you go to the movies and you see some action flick, you know, some strong guy doing all these incredible stunts and everything. And then you walk out of there feeling like a million bucks. Yeah, you know, I could take on the mafia. <laughs> this is illusion through identification. One thinks, oh, I could be like that. One identifies with this, well, illusory character projected on a movie screen or on a video screen, and thinks, oh, I could be like that. I could do like that. What are you really doing? Sitting there on the couch or in the theater, watching an illusion, something that was cooked up in Hollywood with all these special effects. None of it is real. huh? And then you're identifying with that illusion and creating another illusion that you could be like that. You could do like that. It's nonsense. Really, this material life is just bogus, illusory nonsense from one end to the other in every way. Because why? It's all based on this artificial superimposition of the mind and intelligence the ego. The ego is nothing but a collection of thoughts. I am this. I am that. I am doing this. I am, I am changing that. But the actual self never changes. Therefore, one should transfer one's center of gravity, as it were, one's center of consciousness and identity, from the false ego to the self, Brahman. By hearing about Brahman from authorized sources like the Upanishads and Vedanta Sutra or Brahma Sutra, from Shankaracharya's purports and commentaries, and practice this view, practice seeing yourself as unchanging actionless, consciousnessless, <laughs> not unconscious, but perfectly aware of itself, Brahman alone. And that is the secret of enlightenment. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.